So today I'm going to winterize my RV for winter storage. This uh, did not come with a kit for winterizing. So this travel trailer <clears throat> did not come uh, ready with a, a kit that uh, comes off your hose out of your main uh, holding tank. So I'm going to have to install one. I already have the drawers pulled out and these uh, covers here that cover this stuff up. Uh, the factory, it does come with bypass for the hot water tank. So there's a, a knob there. And there's a knob there. You basically just turn those and it shuts it off so that nothing goes into the hot water tank because you don't want antifreeze in your hot water tank. So by turning those two, what it'll do is it'll bypass where it comes in the cold water line. It'll go right through and go ahead and go into the hot water without getting inside the tank. And then the kit that I have is a, must be a newer one because the last couple of kits that I've gotten weren't quite like this. Got this one from RCDs. And it comes with uh, Coupler, some Teflon tape, the bypass hose, and this is made out of brass, which is uh, good, so it's not going to break down very easily. It comes with a set of directions also, and uh, I think the best thing about this particular kit is it's uh, it hooks right up onto the pump and you'll see this arrow that's on this this arrow is to go away from the pump so this end here screws onto this coupler that screws onto the pump you put your Teflon tape on there you screw this on the screws into here and then your line that was on the pump goes into either one of these whichever one you want and then this has threads on it and it threads into whichever one and then this is the the hose that goes down into your antifreeze and then you'll just turn this whichever way and it will either suck from here out of your antifreeze and run it through your lines for winterization or when you flip it to the other position it will suck out of the holding tank for regular water use out of your fresh water tank and a set of directions explains everything so the fact this goes directly onto the pump isn't uh, I've not seen anything like this one yet. The last one I had, it was already on the travel trailer when I got it. Now you can dump antifreeze into your um, fresh water tank and suck it out of there, but I don't really want antifreeze in my fresh water tank any more than I do the hot water tank. So this is one way of doing it without getting any antifreeze into your fresh water tank. Um, this is the hose that's going down into the, to the tank. This is where it comes up. That hose 
and goes right into the side of the pump. And then there's your, your strainer that's in there. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on and uh, get antifreeze ran through the lines. So I got these two drawers pulled out here and the access panels removed for the hot water tank and the water pump. This is factory from the hot water tank. They do have these bypass valves that are on here. Um, these valves are made so that you don't have to have a bypass kit. Some older RVs or maybe some newer ones on some brands don't have them. And they're only made to go one direction. So when you turn it, that's as far as it'll go. That is in bypass mode. That allows the water to travel straight through without going out of the tank because this is a hot water end. And when you turn it back the other way, it shuts this side off and pulls from the tank. This way shuts off the tank end and goes right through. So when these are in your regular camping position, the cold water will go into the bottom, the hot water will come out of the top. When you set it up to winterize it and you turn those valves, it allows it to circulate right through this bypass hose and not go into the tank. The water pump is here, uh, right there. That's the strainer that's on it. And then that line that's coming out of the side of the strainer runs right back down into the holding tank. Now if you wanted to, I guess you could put antifreeze in your holding tank and just turn your pump on and suck the antifreeze out of the holding tank. But I don't really want any antifreeze in there. It'll cause some buildup over time and you'll just have to flush it, flush it, flush it when you dewinterize next camping season. That's something I'd rather not do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go drain out the water that's in the hot water tank. So this is your drain plug here. Um, one thing that uh, is going to be helpful make sure you take the pressure off the tank because if not when you start unscrewing this the pressure is on there this thing's going to shoot right out so you want to make sure you depressurize the tank and you can do that by using the pressure release valve so a lot of the pressure is off of it I'm going to need a socket and a wrench to get that right. Then, of course, never stand directly in front of that, just in case it does still pop out. If it blows out of there, you don't want it to hit in your face. This is an antidote rod. came uh, with it from factory. A lot of the factories are actually starting to put those rods in there. Helps keep from eating up the inside of your tank. It actually eats this rod up. There's Teflon tape that's on there. If you open your pressure release valve, this will really come out. It's a six gallon hot water tank.
So once the bulk of the water is out, I'll go ahead and push that valve back down to close it, put my rod in there. And then generally what I'll do, because this is, uh, I'll just leave the wrench and the socket in there over the winter. pick the greatest days to do these projects it's pouring down rain again all right here's the antifreeze that you use it's just regular RV marine antifreeze you can pick this up at Walmart for two three dollars for a gallon um, shouldn't take any more than a a gallon and a half maybe two gallons um, I like to dump it down into my black tank and my gray tanks and make sure that I got this stuff everywhere just to make sure none of the lines are going to freeze up and bust there are low point drains on here that I need to get to when the rain slacks off a bit I'll open up those low point drains I'll go ahead and crank these bypass valves on here The tank should be shut off and the water when I start, or the antifreeze when I start pumping it after I get this kit on there, it should come right through that line and right on into the hot water lines as well. I do have an outdoor kitchen on this RV, so I'm gonna have to go out there and get that open. The neighbors park kind of close here in the storage lot, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get the outdoor unit open but I can get it open enough so that I can get in there and get the water running so here are the low point drains on my particular unit these are on there kind of snug because they are under pressure so I'm going to need a pair of pliers to try to break them loose. Then your additional is to go in to make sure you turn on the spigot. And I just went to the outdoor kitchen back here and opened up the hot and the cold. It allows it to suck air in, so anything in there that may be residual, it'll allow it to get the rest of it out of there. Now we'll get the hot off. So the purpose in the low point drain is this is the lowest point of the RV 
So when you take these off, any water that's in the lines should drain out of there. And since you're pumping antifreeze into your system, I'm not really certain that this area, this little section wouldn't remain full of water. If there were no low point drains, then you could almost be certain that pumping your antifreeze out of the gallon through the water pump into the lines would uh, get all the lines filled with the antifreeze. But on this unit, I've never had one with low point drains. So I wasn't sure if I would have antifreeze everywhere except for here. And then these freeze up and bust over the winter. Not something I want to find out in the summer. So it only takes a couple minutes to go ahead and take those caps off, let them drain out. Now I know they're not going to hold water. They're going to hold antifreeze. So even in the summertime when I dewinterize, I may take these two caps back off, let all the antifreeze drain out and turn water on and just let water blast out of them to make sure that there's no residual antifreeze left in these low points.